What's up with Woody? What's up with Woody? What's up with Woody? Hey, you guys. I'm back in all my holiday gear. <laughs> These glasses are hilarious. Hilarious. How y'all been doing this week? I wanted to get right on into this podcast and let you guys know this is going to be a fun filled podcast full of everything. So many updates and so much new fun stuff. Still haven't got the whole podcast equipment that I've gotten together to actually test and all the things because I got a new dog this week. So I will get into that story here in a minute. But I wanted to just say this is going to be a filled podcast. We have a new segment that I'm introducing this week. And let's just start off with our T-Mobile glass, our free T-Mobile glass from T-Mobile Tuesdays. And let's crack open a cold Coca-Cola with that. Let's start off with the Christmas countdown before anything. Let's just do the Christmas countdown. That cold Coca-Cola in this cold glass on T-Mobile Tuesdays this uh, app if you have T-Mobile anybody that has T-Mobile or Metro PCS gets free items on Tuesdays sometimes free red boxes sometimes free food sometimes um, free glasses I mean they've given me all sorts of stuff they've given me even umbrellas but this is not a promotion I'm just telling you guys it's such a good deal it's free. So if you got T-Mobile, download the T-Mobile app and our T-Mobile Tuesdays app and you'll get a lot of free stuff. I sent Braxton right over on Tuesday to get my free glass. Before we get into the Whaty update, let's do the Christmas countdown. So of course we do the Christmas countdown with none other than Elf on the Shelf. Hey guys, I'm back this week. He's so happy to be back and he's getting sadder and sadder that Christmas is going to be over sooner than he thinks. <laughs> he loves to be here for the holiday season and he always just feels like he doesn't have enough time on his hands to enjoy the season. So the Christmas countdown is keeping him chipper, isn't it little buddy? Yes it is. It is making me very chipper he says. Hold on he's whispering to me. He's about to whisper. What does he say? Hold on. He's saying, God, he have a sip of the Coke out of my T-Mobile glass. Um, Elf on the Shelf, I don't know how many times we have to say this, but you cannot eat or drink. But you can touch it. Do you want to touch it? you want to feel like what it feels like to hold a glass? Oh my gosh, I love pretending like I'm holding a glass. <laughs> glass always makes a drink taste better. Especially a cold cola. Which you would not know, Elf on the Shelf, I'm so sorry to say. But he's ready for the Christmas countdown. And today, which I don't even know what day it is, let's check it out. It is December 9th. And if you're smart, you can do the calculations in your mind and say, we got, <laughs> hold on, <laughs> let me do the calculations in my head. 9 minus 25 is, um, 15 right <laughs> or 16 do we have 16 days till Christmas oh my goodness let me look it up to be precise there goes Elfie's hat oh and Elfie wants to show you guys something in one second let's see how many days till Christmas how many days until Christmas 16 I was right okay so when we were on here last it's it was 23 days until Christmas and today is 16 days, and I told you guys we would get into the teens. And I think we only have one more podcast episode until Christmas, you guys. So, <laughs> I'm about to be sad. The week of Christmas, I might take a week off from the podcast, but I'll let you guys know ahead of time. But don't worry, I won't be gone long. <laughs> Alright, so 16 days until Christmas. One, six. And it looks like there's a little piece of black something on that one, but I got it off. And it says 16 days. 16 days, you guys, till Santa Claus comes to town. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, now Elf on the Shelf has a special, special surprise he got this week. And he's super uber excited about it. And it's giving us Oscar the Grouch vibes. <laughs> he got himself a new dumpster with a lid 
and it literally looks like a little trash can and he loves to play inside of it it's like yes you guys i love to play inside of it he's been in the christmas tree you guys in the christmas tree in his trash can and it's just giving me oscar the grouch vibes i made a little video The video was so cute of him, and I thought he looked like Austin the Grouch right there. But look at him. Hi, you guys. I'm giving Oscar the Grouch vibes. <laughs> I love to be in my little trash can, and I told him, do not be playing in the tree. Our own cat doesn't even play in the tree, but Elf and Michelle can't get him out of the Christmas tree. He wants to eat all the candy canes, and I told him, you cannot eat. He cannot eat or drink, and he still to this day he thinks he can oh you are trouble and he's got something on his little on his little um cheek right here and i don't know what it is let me examine you have you hurt yourself in the tree or, um little elf on the shelf <laughs> well elf on the shelf's gonna say goodbye for a moment and we are going to start the what you update <laughs> How has everybody been? Because my life has flipped upside down and turned all over. <laughs> my hair is still wet from my shower too, so um, it's not looking so cute, but my little hat's looking really adorable. We got a new dog. We got a new dog this week, and her name is Hazel Grace. Before we ever even thought of getting a dog, we've been thinking like, boy, he's so depressed. Oh, like, he seems depressed. He seems like he wants a friend to play with. My other dog, Molly, is not a dog that can play. Like, we've talked about this on the podcast. She's old. She's all broad. Boy needed a friend. So we decided we wanted to stick with the same breed. And he's a German short hair pointer. So we wanted to keep the same breed together. We looked up how to adopt an animal, which is the hardest thing. And you can't really sell animals on Facebook and all that. So on Craigslist, they still have Craigslist, you guys. And on Craigslist, you can go in there and buy dogs. And I know it's not great. People don't want us to buy dogs anymore. They think it's illegal, all this stuff. A lot of, I think there's a lot of laws around that. But on Craigslist, you can still do it. So we looked up German short hair pointers specifically to our area. Hardly any. Found her with not the best pictures, but we found her purebred. $150. She's like, uh, she was two and a half years old. She was in Auburn, Alabama, which is like three and a half hours from here. We contacted them. We were nervous because we were like, how about if we show, like, go all the way up there and they don't meet us or they don't give us the dog or whatever. And so we said, like, if we're traveling that far, can we get her for $100? They're like, yeah. And uh, we were saying, oh, can we come get her on Saturday? And they're like, no, we can't on Saturday. We can do it on Sunday. And so we had decided on a dog like Thursday, getting boy one, found one by Friday night, talked to the people Friday and Saturday, and then by Sunday we were on our way to get her. And we did not expect her to be in as bad of a shape as she was or is. She's getting a lot better. She's already been here um, over five days. But we picked her up and she was just skin and bones, emaciated definitely starved she probably never been in a car never been in a house for sure she's never been around television she's scared to death of t television she's just got a few little ticks that are like you know abused dog type type of situation and we dealt with this with boy boy was definitely not as abused as she was a lot of the same characteristics that she's doing with boy in the beginning like he wouldn't go to the bathroom on the leash with me but he would do it with Braxton that's how she was the first few days finally she went to the bathroom for me on the leash which is amazing uh because boy it took I think it took months for boy we're gonna get her fixed so she calms down I know she could have babies and she could you know she's a purebred but we're really not into that we're, we don't want to breed her we want her to be a loved cared for animal <laughs> dog our our people and so her real name's Hazel Nut, but they, I guess they called her Hazel for short. And so I loved Hazel Grace. My sister's name's Grace, but I just think Hazel and Grace just go together so perfectly. 
And so I named her Hazel Grace. Or I just went along with her name and then added Grace to it. And she really loves it. She gets excited. She's been super lethargic the first, like, three days just sleeping nonstop because she's so malnourished. But she's been eating really well. She really didn't know how to take a treat. I thought she did, but she really didn't. She's getting better at taking treats. It seems like probably whatever she did eat, it was super soft or mushy. I think they might have been feeding her scraps. Really, that's what I think. And so her teeth don't seem strong or her jaws and her mouth don't seem strong. So she won't take like really hard bones or hard treats. She wants something soft like cheese. But we're trying to just stick with just like cheese, maybe an actual dog treat, and then dog food, and that's it. So we can keep her on a really healthy diet and schedule with everything. She has not pottied in the house, not one time so far. She has not been in a kennel at all. She has her own little night-night bed. She's actually started to play with boy, and it's just amazing. She's going to be a really great dog. Of course, we're taking her to the vet, all the things to get her in perfect health. But the training is going to be hard. She pulls a lot, and I think she fought with other dogs for food and stuff. Because she's got some scarring around her eyes and face. She seems depressive, but I think she'll get out of that. Especially when she gets fixed, when she's more n nourished. But it seems the past 24, 48 hours... Have been our better hours the like three days before that were not the best days her and molly are kind of territorial at the moment but i think it's more just about food and being too close together they just need to be watched as as soon as she's fixed i think that will end because molly's fixed and then also i think she really wants to play with molly but she doesn't realize that molly doesn't play so it's just a whole training thing. Like I said, she was pulling on the leash. We got to figure, she's definitely not leash trained. She doesn't really know how to sit down. She does know her name. I think she understands no and stop, or she's starting to, but definitely not the first few days. She gets really, really, really active, and then she gets really, really calm. So it's like a big amount of energy at one moment, and then she'll totally be out of it like tired lethargic but I think that's also a nutrition thing um, getting her on a schedule with just when we're really active when we're really not so it's been a fun week <laughs> um, so now I've got two big dogs but they're really great and then I have Molly and then of course we have the kitties that come in and out and we love them and I love her name Hazel Grace isn't that so so sweet I also did a whole rescue video on her on YouTube. I will put the link in the description below, but right now I'll play a little clip of that video. We're going to get Boy a new friend. Go three hours to Auburn, Alabama. We have now made it to Bucky's. Bucky's! <laughs> Woo! Onward to get our puppy. A new one. A new one. We have like an hour and 50 minutes until we get there. Look how excited he is about the new one. She's so pretty. Hazel. Hazel and boy. They're meeting each other. She's malnourished and she's got some skin problems. We're gonna take care of her. Take her home. You guys can tell that she's malnourished and she's got some little skin problems. And but she's, she's beautiful. Not as happy as he is. Yeah. But she's gonna get more happy. And Molly's over here. <laughs> A lot of care she's emaciated yeah she needs to get used to eating dog food i don't know if she ever has she's very sweet though okay onward and upward <laughs> onward and upward uh let's continue on with this podcast with changing the subject and talking about something that happened with my mom this week okay so my mom bicycles to work she lives really really close to work and she bikes to work and so there's probably oh i can't even think is there two or three i think there's two churches in between her and her work <laughs> that's crazy two just on the one street she passes them every time she goes to work well of course they put out their nativity scenes right and we laughed about this a few years ago because we would 
walk by there with my dog or with our dogs we would always see the nativity scene and the baby is never in the mangers there's no baby in the manger and i don't know if it's like they'll put the baby in the manger on christmas day i don't really i don't know what they do about that or maybe they don't want the baby to be stolen i don't know maybe maybe that's a big thing maybe people steal the babies i don't know the little baby jesus is <laughs> But mom was like, love, I have passed by the nativity scenes multiple times this week and there is no babies in those nativity scenes. No baby Jesuses. So what is the point? And then there's the one that she passes, like the second one she passes. They have the wise men like up on the hill coming down like from afar. So it's like coming from afar to, G <laughs> to baby Jesus. And these nativity scenes are hilarious. And I'm going to get into nativity scenes in a minute on the main topic, but that's pretty funny. That's, I, I, I've got to just say that's pretty dang funny that my mom <laughs> notices that there's no babies in these nativity scenes at churches, like set up in their front area. Golly, this hat seems a little tighter <laughs> than, last, <laughs> than last week's hat. <laughs> Okay, and then also one other thing that I've started this week is I've started to do Walmart delivery. You know how I've always told, I don't even know if I've told you on the podcast, but I do Walmart pickup where I can go pick it up and I don't have to go in that dang store to buy my stuff. But I'm still having to go there, pick it up, and bring it back. Not no more. Walmart delivery, regular people for $98 a year, just anyone, $98 a year can get free delivery tip optional on anything in Walmart and they will bring it to you within the same day. People that are on EBT or like government assistance, you can qualify for $49 a year payment for the free delivery tip optional. What are we doing with our lives? We don't need to be in Walmart anymore, you guys. I got my first Walmart delivery yesterday and it was so nice. Braxton was home. They brought it right up to the door. Braxton brought it right in. I didn't have to get in a car. I didn't have to drive anywhere. I didn't even hardly have to move any groceries myself. It was amazing and it's life changing. So if, I'm not trying to promo and I'm not making money off this, but I'm just saying, if you guys want to make your life easier, get on it. Get on it. My mom did it. I did it. And we're happy. We aren't going to that dang Walmart again. Unless we had to get like some clothes and try them on maybe, but that's about it. That's a what's up with Woody update for the week. And let's get into the main topic. Okay, let's get into the nativity scene thing one more time. And then we will get on to the other topic. But uh, I did want to mix the nativity scene in with our main topic for this week because... I did a video last year, and I'm going to post it up on here. Just got to dive into the nativity scene world, because at this point, this is what a nativity scene should look like. Mine is beautiful. This is mine. I love it. Let's check out some other nativity scenes that I don't quite like. Okay, this nativity scene is supposed to be modern. Well, it's modernly blocks. If I saw that on your table, I would not know that's a nativity scene. Okay, what's up with this? It literally looks like it came out of a child's toy box. Isn't that like toy blocks? I would like to know, what, do you get that star on the top of this nativity scene? That's not safe for children. This looks like a child's toy. Okay, they have pulled out the Jenga blocks and they are now using them as a nativity scene. Wow, I am blown away. I mean, am I allowed to be offended by this? Does this really depict the birth of baby Jesus? Well, this nativity scene is actually for children and I prefer this in my living room than any of the other ones I just saw. Don't mind me, I'm just gonna stick to my traditional nativity scene. It was about me talking about nativity scenes and I love nativity scenes. Do not get me wrong. I have one that's super old for my grandmother and it's super nice. I love it. It actually, you know, looks like Mary, Joseph, baby Jesus, three wise men, the little animals. It's glass porcelain. 
looks identical to what we would think of as the birth of baby Jesus. And so I looked up and I've seen that people are getting nativity scenes that look nothing like, <laughs> literally nothing like, and I'm going to post up some pictures here, nothing like baby Jesus, Mother Mary, Joseph, and the three wise men is blowing my mind. Like, I could look it up right now. They have glass pieces that are different colors that are supposed to be the representation of the nativity scene. They have Hazel is drinking some water right now. They also have nativity scenes that are blocks. Little blocks, like like Scrabble blocks. <laughs> no, like Jenga, Jenga blocks, that's what I meant. And I'm just thinking, why even put a nativity scene up that are blocks? Or pieces of glass when that doesn't look anything like the birth of baby Jesus at all. All right, let's give her a moment. Every time that she drinks, water just pours out of the bottom of her mouth when she gets out of there, when she gets out of that <laughs> bowl of water. She's a big time drinker too. She loves water. Even Elf on the Shelf is like flabbergasted by these nativity scenes. What is going on you guys with these nativity scenes? It needs to look like baby Jesus. It needs to be for real baby Jesus. <laughs> It doesn't need to be blocks or glass. <laughs> Let me see if I can look up some wild ones real quick. Nativity scenes. Oh, they've got them all different ways. Oh, they've got toy versions. I want to look up like the strangest nativity scenes. Oh my goodness. <laughs> they have nativity scene in a baby gourd. You guys, I am going to have to have these pictures up. They have a zombie nativity scene. <laughs> a zombie one. Y'all, this is hilarious. I cannot wait to have these pictures up. You are going to laugh so hard at these nativity scenes. Oh my gosh, there's a nativity scene with the masks. The COVID masks. Oh my gosh. What is this? Oh my goodness. Oh, ducks. A nativity scene of ducks. Y'all, they have gotten wild on this. Balloons. A balloon one. Twisted balloons like at the circus. Okay. Alright, um, that's about all, all she wrote on the nativity scenes, you guys. Onward to our next topic. Onward and upward toward our next topic. Christmas music, you guys, is more inappropriate than we think. I've got a little list of a few songs here that we're going to look up. We're going to interpret the lyrics <laughs> of these songs. So, Silent Night is the first one. Let's get right on into it. Silent Night lyrics. Oh look, they even have Silent Night lyrics, original or 2023. We're gonna do the original. <laughs> we want the original lyrics. Finish the lyrics. And Silent Night is actually a very short song, I noticed when I looked this up yesterday. They just add a lot of <laughs> all these different little noises and tones and all the things. Silent Night, Holy Night. <laughs> Silent Night. And this is my grandmother's absolute favorite, absolute favorite song. And she's passed away years ago. But she used to tell me when I was a kid, she'd be like, turn this up, turn this music up. This is Silent Night. This is my favorite. And she'd be over there, Silent Night. She'd be singing like that. Like, Silent Night. <laughs> And so here it is. It says, Silent night, holy night. All is calm, all is bright. Round yon virgin, mother and child. Round yon virgin. Do we have to hear those words? <laughs> I know she was a virgin. We all know it. But the children's ears. <laughs> round yon virgin. Okay. <laughs> let's round, let's get around this virgin. 
<laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. That does not sound proper. Holy infant, so tender and mild. Do you call an infant tender and mild? <laughs> we need to change the words. I was watching um, another podcast with Libby Higgins and Tina Deball, and they were talking about this same song, and she was like, let's not say tender and mild. Why don't we say cute and cuddly? <laughs> Like, what the heck? Let's do cute and cuddly. What else is in here that's a little bit weird? And then it goes into sleep in heavenly peace. Sleep in heavenly peace. And that kind of sounds like kind of um unalive type of stuff. <laughs> and then it says silent night, holy night. Shepherds quake at the sight. They're quaking. Oh, they're scared. Is that mean scared? Yeah, that's pretty much about it. There's nothing too much more wild in that one. But round young virgin and your infant is so tender and mild. That just doesn't sound very proper. And let's look up the Last Christmas song. Last Christmas is actually, I read the lyrics and online it's saying that it's inappropriate because the guy is not over his love from last year or his ex and he's just going to dive into some other relationship but when i looked at it it's a lot <laughs> there's a lot more going on than just that i wouldn't suggest anybody to go on if you're not over your ex but sometimes that also helps things uh, but the actual lyrics are just a slightly um you know on edge let's check them out and I love Last Christmas. This is, this song is my song, you guys. And it's by Wham. Love them. Love them, love them. And I could sing this all year long. <laughs> so this is one of my favorites. Last Christmas, I gave you my heart. But the very next day, you gave it away. This year, to save it from tears, I'll give it to someone special. Okay, first of all, he gave his heart to her and she gave it away the next day. What does that mean? What does that mean? Did they have like a hookup? He thought he was in love. Next morning she's like, I'm on to the next one. On to the next one. <laughs> was it a one night stand? Was it, um, was she tricking him? Is she a, a, a prostitute or whore? Like what's going on here? <laughs> and then he says this year to save me from my tears. I'll give it to someone special. He's just gonna go find another special person out of nowhere? He said, last Christmas, I gave you my heart, but the very next day you gave it away. This year, to save it from tears, I'll give it to someone special. Then he says, once bitten and twice shy, I keep my distance, but you still catch my eye. Tell me, baby, do you recognize me? Well, it's been a year and it doesn't surprise me. So why are they back in the same place? Are they family members? Are they cousins? Are they kissing cousins? Also, once bitten and twice shy. Once bitten, twice shy. What does that mean? <laughs> Were they biting on each other? Like, I don't freaking know, but that's just a weird, weird one. I keep my distance, but you still catch my eye. The other thing is the actual music video, it's like a friends type of Christmas situation where all the friends are going skiing together at this lodge. So it's almost like, I guess they're all friends and they've all been invited to the same thing in the actual video. Happy Christmas, I wrapped it up and sent it with a note saying I love you, I meant it. Now I know what a fool I've been, but if you kiss me now, I know you'd fool me again. So he's gonna get fooled again by the girl, by the broad. <laughs> he's like, if you just kiss me one more time, I'd love you again. And is he sending her notes after she's already like broke up with him? I don't know. Then it says, a crowded room Friends with tired eyes, I'm hiding you from your soul of ice. My God, I thought you were someone to rely on. Me, I guess I was just a shoulder to cry on. <laughs> so yeah, she was she was going through her own breakup and he was her rebound. 
and she was getting over somebody else and she was just and he thought oh this girl's probably gonna love with me but she's like probably getting over some other dude dude and she was just trying to use you as a rebound to make her feel better <laughs> and she's done <laughs> cut the corns done <laughs> Denzo. So that's another one that's pretty funny. Let me look up these other ones. I saw mommy kissing Santa Claus. We do not need to get into that one too much. Y'all, that's not, that was not appropriate. <laughs> I saw mommy kissing Santa Claus. Let's just look up the lyrics to that one real quick because I think there is some um, not so good lyrics in that. And that's a, almost like a child song. Well, mommy's kissing Santa Claus. I saw mommy kissing Santa Claus underneath that mistletoe last night. She didn't hear me creep down the stairs to have a peep. A peep. I thought it was a peek, but it's peep. She thought that I was tucked up in my bedroom fast asleep. <laughs> then I saw mommy tickle. Santa Claus. Where was she tickling him? Oh, underneath his beard, so snowy white. <laughs> okay, so it gives you where that was me, where the tickling was happening. But why? Oh, what a laugh it would have been if Daddy had only seen Mommy kissing Santa Claus last night. <laughs> oh my gosh. So now he's thinking, oh my God, it'd be crazy if my mom or my dad walked in on my mom cheating on my dad. <laughs> This is terrible, and you're teaching this to children. <laughs> okay, he saw mommy kissing Santa Claus. I did, I really did see mommy kissing Santa Claus. And I'm gonna tell dad, it says. I did, I did, I really did see mommy kissing Santa Claus. You gotta believe me, you just gotta believe me. Come on, fellas, believe me. <laughs> so, it's really almost like, it's inappropriate first of all, because the children shouldn't be seeing their mother with any other man but their father, but it was probably her, their father dressed up as Sienna, probably. <laughs> if not, then there's a cheating situation going on here. <laughs> but this is a kid's song, and nobody that's a child should really be listening to those lyrics. And then there's Jingle Bells, which I won't get too much into it. I, I want to look it up, but Jingle Bells, they totally, like, totally skim over and forget about how there was drunk driving that was happening and a possible horrible fatal carriage ride crash. All these Christmas songs are teetering on the edge of inappropriate, but we listen to them every year. Oh, and then we're gonna have to go over a couple more because there's some on here that are just too good. Let's see. Jingle Bells, it says, Dashing through the snow on a one horse open sleigh, over fields we go, laughing all the way, bells on bobtails ring, making spirits bright. What fun it is to ride and sing a sleighing song tonight. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way, oh what fun it is to ride on a one horse open sleigh. Hey, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way, what fun it is to ride on a one horse open sleigh. A day or two ago, I thought I'd take a ride, and soon Miss Fanny Bright was seated by my side. The horse was lean and lank. Misfortune seemed his lot. He got into a drifted bank, and then we got upset. Oh, that's what they were saying. They were saying, the horse was lean and lank. Misfortune seemed his lot. He got into a drifted bank, and then we got upset. I don't know where they came up with him drinking. A day or two ago, the story I must tell, I went out on the snow, and on my back I fell. Um, a gent was riding by, in a one-horse open sleigh, he laughed as they were ice sprawling, lie but quickly drove away, so somebody was, he fell in the ice somewhere, and somebody was laughing at him. And then we just heard the actual, um, upside, I guess they got in a horrible crash. This guy's got horrible fortune. This is such old school language. I can't even decipher it, but um, that's what they're saying is they totally glossed over a drunk driving and possible fatal carriage ride in the Jingle Bells song. So, wonderful. <laughs> another one. Wonderful. You're a mean one, Mr. Grinch is another terrible, terrible one. Also, baby, it's cold outside. We've talked about that. That's like somebody saying like, like, 
the lady wants to leave and the guy's like, no, baby, it's cold outside. I really got to go. No, baby, it's cold out there. He's trying to like date rape her. <laughs> and you're a mean one. Mr. Grinch has a lot of like mean things about the Grinch in it. Santa baby, totally sexual. Just a lot of things. A lot of things here. I, I want to see your mean one, Mr. Grinch, real quick. I, I'm hoping you guys are enjoying my interpretations of these songs and also my singing. <laughs> I'm trying to really get into what it sounds like, you know. Your mean one, Mr. Grinch lyrics. Finish the lyrics. And I keep saying finish the lyrics because Chelsea Lynn, Chelsea Lynn, and Paige Jen have finish the lyrics on their viral podcast. You're a mean one. Mr. Grinch, you're a heel, you're a cuddly, or you're as cuddly as a cactus, you're as charming as a meal, Mr. Grinch, you're a bad banana, Mr. Grinch, you're a greasy black peel, <laughs> you're a vile one, you got termites in your smile, you have all the tender sweetness of a seasick crocodile, you're a foul one. Friends, you don't have none. I wouldn't touch you with a 39 and a half foot pole. This is horrible. This is so sad and so mean. I always felt so bad for the Grinch. I loved him, actually. I felt sad for him. <sighs> okay, y'all. That's the topic of the day. If you guys are interested in this topic, go right now and look up the lyrics to some of these Christmas songs. And your little mind's going to be like, what the hell is going on here? Why are we listening to this crap? Cheers. Cheers, cheers, cheers. Okay, you guys. I want to do one more thing before we wrap this up. This is a new segment, and it's called Lips of the Week. Play that beautiful bean footage. <laughs> Y'all are so cute together. You guys can tell that she's malnourished and she's got some little skin problems. And but she's, she's beautiful. Not as happy as he is. Yeah. But she's gonna get more happy. And Molly's over here. <laughs> Y'all are gonna do so they good. So Y'all are so pretty. She loves him already. I know. I trust him. She knows that that's her breed. But boy's like, um, excuse no, me. No, no, no. <laughs> excuse me. Excuse me. Look what I just found in my Christmas tree. Um, excuse me, sir. When did you show up? <laughs> I didn't know you were going to be hanging from the Christmas tree this year. Um, yeah. This is, uh, just not my vibe. I think you need to get out of my Christmas tree. You're acting like a kitty. And I can't take it. Are we all going to go together? Together? Oh, are you excited? Are you excited? Oh, y'all are tripping me up. Are we gonna go together? 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 Oh, that's sweet, y'all. Sweet. We're gonna go. Yeah. Yes. Good girl. Hey, so Grace. Oh my gosh, this is cute though. Good girl. <laughs> oh my, boy, she's playing with that pillow. <laughs> Look. Play with that pillow. Oh. It's water.
So those clips were just a few clips of our week in my life, Waddy's world, loves life literally, and I wanted to do that every week, maybe, um, you know, a minute of just some clips of the week of what's been going on with us. And I also want to do that to where I'm going to just do little segments, um, just that little segment clip of the week as a separate YouTube video every week, and it's going to only be maybe two minutes long, something like that. But y'all can go in there and watch just what's going on with our week. And I'll be like a little mini update of my week every week. And I'll try to post that every Friday or Saturday. Don't, <laughs> don't, don't hold me to it. But it'll be Friday, Saturday, Sunday, something like that. One, two, three, somewhere in there. But I will do the clips of the week. And I hope you guys all enjoy this. Our main viewers view between Friday and Sunday. So that's why I post a lot of stuff in those days and just stay updated with me by checking definitely on the weekends with different videos and then usually Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday I always try to post another video. So I do a vlog, a mukbang, something. You you guys you guys know what I do. All right, let's wrap this baby right on up. Okay, I have some thoughts of the week, and then I don't really think I have any comments this week. I'll look, but I don't think I do, but we will um, look. So here are some of my thoughts of the week. I have only three of them, but my mom told me the other day, which was crazy because she has a hamster, so she's like looking up all this information, trying to really get to know her hamster really well. She wants to really be involved in his life. As you guys know, we did the whole hamster video where we built a whole hamster habitat for her hamster. Um, and her hamster's name's Nacho, and it was Oliver's hamster, but of course, all the animals that are not wanted in the family are adopted by none other than my mother. <laughs> and um, she is the mommy of all the unwanted animals. So she has ha the hamster, his name's Nacho, and she found out that hamsters can run up to five miles a night. They have to be able to run. I mean, that's the way they stay healthy, but they have to have a ferret, or what do they call it? Not a ferret, ferris wheel, I was going to say. Um, a hamster wheel to run on, and... I actually got a free hamster wheel the other day. They were giving a free hamster wheel away at a pawn shop that we went into. And it was like old and um, like metal. And so I was like, oh, cool. I mean, they gave it to me for free. I brought it home. And then we found out we can't use that wheel. Those are like old school wheels because the little hamsters can get their little hands stuck in the little metal wheels and break them off while they're running. And, I mean, having a hamster is tedious. They're very small and little. Also, they're just like having a rat. And we don't, me and my mom are not really down like that. But Goldie got this hamster for Oliver. And they didn't want it after a while. But we can't just like, you know, let a hamster loose. We got to take care of it. We love it. And we have learned to love it more. But we've not really ever touched it. Um, if we have to move it or anything, we just let it go in its little ball and move the ball around. And we're not, we're not the best at handling vermin <laughs> rats. We aren't, we aren't great with it. But uh, they have to run every night to stay healthy and they have to have their little wheel to run. If they didn't, they die. And they have to run five miles almost a night. So that's wild. Imagine a little hamster running five miles. Me and Braxton had turtles one time and we moved to Florida and the turtles we took them out of their tank and we put them in a little glass bowl with water in it and we put them like in the middle console of our truck where when we were driving we could see them at all times in their little glass dish and they were literally running the whole entire time just trying to walk out of that dish even though it was like a big bowl they couldn't get out of it so they were just continually walking and i was like braxton we might have drove like we drove like nine hours i was like we might have drove nine hours but those little turtles man <laughs> they've been <laughs> they've been walk running the whole way there <laughs> for nine hours running they must be exhausted <laughs> can't 
can't believe it didn't like stress them out enough for them to die or something. But they literally ran running. They were so frantic all the way <laughs> to Sarasota, Florida from uh, Gold Shores, Alabama. It was nine hours, maybe 10. Mm. That was wild. <clears throat> okay, another hilarious. This is absolutely hilarious. You're going, I don't even know. I, I When I heard this yesterday, I died laughing. I'm going to start laughing right now. It's so funny. So this girl, I watch these podcasts and a girl calls into one of my podcasts I watch and she says, I just wanted to let you guys know of something that happened to me or that happens to me all the time. And they're like, what is it? And um, <laughs> she says, my ferret runs over to the dish that my grandmother's ashes are in every morning. She says, every single morning my ferret run runs up to the dish that my grandmother's ashes are in and eats fistfuls, <laughs> fistfuls of my grandmother's ashes. She's like, one day I don't think my grandmother's ashes will be there anymore. I think she's going to eat them all. <laughs> Y'all, this is hilarious. I I can't. I, my eyes are watering. This is so funny. Her ferret, her ferret is eating fistfuls. Fist. She said fistfuls of her grandmother's ashes. Why is her grandmother's ashes able to be open so easily or open? They need to be closed up. And why is your ferret able to get fistfuls of anything into his mouth? And then, I mean, would your grandmother think this is appropriate? <laughs> like, what in the heck is going on over there? Where there's, I, my eyes are literally watering. This is so funny. So, first of all, are you going to just be sad, like, at the end of it all, where your ferret's eating all of them? Yeah, I just could not look at that ferret the same way after he ate fistfuls of my grandmother's ashes. Why is her grandmother's ashes not covered up in a proper place? Can the ferret open the little thing up and get it, you know, in his mouth from there and close it back up? And are you just watching him eat fistfuls of your grandmother's ashes? Please comment below and let us know what's going on. Let me know what you guys think about this because I'm flabbergasted. <laughs> I'm straight up flabbergasted about this one. <laughs> this is wild. Oh, uh, wild. Very wild. All I can say is, is that's just, that is so funny. What does Elf on the Shelf think about this? What do you think about a little ferret um, eating fistfuls, fistfuls of... <laughs> The owner's grandmother's ashes. What do you got to say about it, Elfie? Tell us. Well, I think that's a little bit inappropriate. And I think that the grandmother would be really mad. And that girl is being naughty if she's not stopping her ferret from eating her grandmother's ashes. She's not getting any Christmas presents this year. It's going to be coal in her stocking. And hopefully her ferret won't eat that coal. Because that's all she's getting. <laughs> okay, that was a little bit cruel. Let's, let's, let's cool it down. Cool it down, Alfie. And I want you to tell everybody that you're sorry for being rude. I'm sorry for being rude. I'm just being honest. <laughs> He's always just too honest, isn't he? All right, Alfie, take a little break in your little garbage can. <laughs> Goodness, take a break. Sit over there and break it out. <laughs> okay, another last thing that I thought of. Um, this week was, our, our, all of our dogs, imagine, like, being adopted and you, like, get this new home and you're, like, with new people and everything, like, that'd be really weird, I would think, as a child, but I can't even imagine how our dogs feel because they can't even talk to us. Like, Molly, she was the only dog, and then all of a sudden we brought in another dog, and she's like, whoa, and then the other dog had never been around her, so it's almost like he's like, oh, an adoptive sister. And then now we have the new dog and we bring her in and the cats even too. What do all these animals, all these pets think? It's like, 
do they feel all adopted or like what would that feeling be to for a dog would it feel really weird like all of a sudden like oh that's my new mom and dad like all of a sudden like they're my mom and dad like they're calling they're telling me to call them that <laughs> even though I get talk. but that's my mom that's my dad and then I have this adoptive sister that's little little and she doesn't like me and then I have an adoptive brother that loves me too much and then I have these adoptive cats outside like what is going on here <laughs> I'm sure the the dogs are just probably like I, I mean I guess it's happiness but I'm sure at first it's not happiness it's probably like this is weird I'm like totally around people I have no clue I don't know anything about them. Okay, I was going to do some comments of the week, but I don't have really any comments that I can see. Um, that I can see. Yeah, not really. Of course, I keep getting comments from Burn Bear community, uh, destroying plushed animals community, saying, can you do another video as soon as possible? I promise I will as soon as I can. <laughs> but as I said last week, I cannot justify spending 30 or 40 dollars on a big huge stuffed animal that's going to be destroyed in the same day uh so i really need to get one for free <laughs> so uh we'll try to figure that out eventually let us get on out of here you guys and i hope you guys have a great week happy freaking holidays i hope you guys enjoyed this podcast episode like comment subscribe we love it when you guys subscribe we love it when you comment i love it i want i reply to everybody's comments um, Elf on the Shelf, he loves it. He's looking at the comments too with me. He's excited. He's he's being really sweet in the comment section. I, I promise you that. So Christmas is right around the corner. We got one more podcast episode till Christmas. I really hope I can get a gingerbread house to do it on the podcast this next week. And um, if not, I'll still try to do a video of that. Uh, and I'll let you guys know. But I'm going to get up on out of here. I've been on here way too long. And this is a packed podcast. So I hope you enjoy it. And uh, love you guys so much. Have a great week. Let's get on out of here. Bye. Bye, you guys. See you next week. See you next week on the podcast. Little Elf on the Shelf is going to be playing in his little gar garbage can all week. Stay tuned for the videos. Bye! Bye, you guys. Bye, bye, bye. Like, comment, and subscribe.